cool. Am I looking at the camera or just bust uh, you? Just us. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Let's go. Greg, thank you so much for joining us today. For sure, yeah. Thanks for having me. Um, just to introduce you on behalf of CFMU, your cigarettes after sex. Yes, that's true. <laughs> it is us. Awesome. Um, so, how are you doing today? How's your set? Yeah, it was good. It was nice to play Montreal again, and um, you know the crowds are really sweet and really nice. So we had a good time. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about your music. Um, I know I was reading an article with you and Independent, and you talk about how. Um, a lot of your favorite artists mm -hmm. kind of don't talk about sex that much and even though sex yeah. is like a very big part of like romance and romantic life could you expand a little bit more on that yeah it was always intriguing to me I mean there's so many artists that just it seems like it's kind of like uh, or it was taboo to talk about sex directly um, until I you know started listening to like Serge Gainsbourg and I thought wow he's like in the 60s talking about sex pretty directly with a song like Je t'aime or something and his music was really sexually charged but I didn't. I couldn't really think of like a, a U.S. or U.K. equivalent to him in the '60s, especially or like the '70s even. Um, so I just thought, I mean, you know, sex and romance are intermingled for me. Why, you know, why is why aren't we able to talk about sex like so openly in, in songs? And why is it kind of avoided so much, um, especially in romance? I think you get other sexually charged music, but it's really like kind of a forceful or something. It's like kind of more like a party kind of music that talks about sex. Yeah. So many songs like that, you know. But I'm um, talking about sex in like more of a gentle way, in this more romantic way. I don't really feel like I ever see that um, yeah. for whatever reason. Me too. Like I, I think yeah. I, like when I read it, like I noticed it too, because like mm -hmm. I think um, there's always been a taboo around it. Like it's, yeah, like romance can't equate to sex, even though it's for a lot of people it's a big part of it too, right? Yeah, maybe, maybe it's sort of like the fact that you talk about that in a kind of uh, things feel like less sweet. Or something like, oh, we're talking about romance, but if you start talking about sex, it starts to feel a little more um, maybe perverse for most people. <laughs> but um, I think that's the trick, and that's what I want to do with my writing, was find a way to talk about it where it felt right and it felt, like, honest. And that was the, you know, I think the main challenge in a lot of my writing is still that, still conveying that sense of uh, sensuality. But it's still, these are like love songs. They're about really deep romantic affairs. Um, I'm just saying that I need I need both to talk openly and, and honestly about love. I need to talk about sex too. Um, you know, some films can do it. Like, a, you know, if you ever saw like Blue Is the Warmest Color, mm. it's a great like modern film where love and sex are totally intermingled and sex is like on full display in that film. It's very important to the film, but it's also a, a, an amazing love story. So I recommend that. That's kind of I think I could see like film equivalents more than than maybe artist equivalents or something like that. Does film inspire a lot of your music? Yeah, totally. I think what I'm trying to do is uh, I, I've been watching you know movies since I was a kid. Uh, and at my old uh, at my parents' house when I was growing up, we had like this huge closet of like a thousand VHS tapes. So I was you know watching movies daily and watching all kinds of movies. Um, so the cin cinematic influence has always uh, been a, a big thing for me. And I think now what I've tried to do is since I'm not a director myself, I want to take like the feeling of a certain film I like and somehow bring that into the music. So I think that's been kind of another challenge too, is how do I, if I see like a great film like uh, Double Life of Veronique or Lea Ventura or those kind of films that have this certain mood to it, I'm always thinking how do I bring that mood from these films in certain scenes even and kind of have that and have the music feel that way. So that's been a big thing. Even to the point where I would have films on in the background when I'm writing or recording, just kind of like films on and mute and uh, it kind of gives you this rhythm, kind of gives you a vibe that I think you absorb and you either get that in the performance or you get that in the writing or something, but yeah, it's, it's a huge deal. It's, it's very hard because in a film you have, you have music, you have a visual right. element, you have lights and et cetera, and then mm. you can create that mood and it's like, it's very obvious when things are happening, but with yeah. songs and music, like, it's very hard because you're creating an entire environment with just one sense. Exactly, and then What's, that's what's kind of greater to me about music than film. It's almost like a novel where it's more powerful, I think, if you imagine something rather than maybe seeing it. So, you know, I'm telling these narrative kind of stories and the people can see like whatever images come to mind. The music kind of channels that and brings that out of you. Something I always liked, I would listen to, you know, like, was it like Aphex Twins, Selected Ambient Volume 2 or something? Mm -hmm. And I would always listen to these records and they would kind of conjure up images of just kind of strange locations in my mind. And I always loved that too. I thought, I want to make music that, that people hear and it kind of just transports them and it opens their mind's eye up and it 
they can kind of see things and it's very visual too. I think that's really powerful. Have you always wanted to be a musician? Pretty much, yeah. Like since I can, the earliest, I think there's like old video of me saying that, that I wanted to be a pop star. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you gotta, gotta find that whole movie and track it down or something. But yeah, it was earliest memories are wanting to perform and, and loving music a lot. Did you, did you have any other aspirations or just? Not really. When I was a kid, I was wanted to kind of maybe like an, be an illustrator or something at some point. Mm -hmm. You know, I was kind of sketch things, but once I started actually playing piano and playing guitar more often, that just totally fell out of my my life, and I can't draw a thing anymore. <laughs> um, but that was really it. You know, I still love film. I'd still maybe like to try directing and see what it does, just for fun, even like something that's a little different. Um, but that's film and music are the only two aspirations I really have. Yeah, like the like from what I hear, like it inspires a lot of your music, and vice versa. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So it's it'd be cool to just try that out and see see what happens. Yeah. You know, it's just kind of like a curious thing. Do you direct any of the music videos or? No, like, you know, we kind of have this thing where we haven't done a video yet because it just feels like there hasn't been a, a need to do it. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, so, but that's kind of like would lead me to maybe I'll try directing something yeah. for us yeah. instead of getting somebody else and see what, see what it does. So you might see that from us maybe in the next two years, like uh, trying to do like a kind of a music video project in some kind of way with maybe me trying to direct it and, and see what happens. But that might be the first thing I do. Could you Excellent. tell us a little bit about like the inspiration behind this new record? The or? new stuff? Yeah. yeah, I mean, the what I love is recording on location. And so there was kind of this happy accident that happened where the first EP we did, we did it in the stairway of my university. And it came out so well that I thought, I always want to make a record on location versus in a studio. Meaning that we just set up like somewhere random, like we could set up in the middle of this field and do a record. That's how I want to do it versus we're going into a studio and I'm going to overdub guitar parts and I just, I always felt that was a very sterile environment um, for this band especially. Um, so the idea for the, the newest record sessions was we rented this like a, kind of like a villa in Mallorca, Spain and we just set up all of our equipment like in this courtyard like under the stars every night and recorded it like that, you know, just over the course of a week. Just to kind of get out of our element and to go somewhere really, you know, scenic and secluded um, and just kind of make like a little project of it. Mm -hmm. So, that, so you're gonna kind of get that feeling to it, you know? Yeah, I'd like probably have a lot more fun, like <laughs> out in the environment too. Exactly, I think that's part of it too. It's I want the recordings to feel kind of just like kind of like a hangout, honestly. Mm -hmm. The one we, like when we did Affection, we did the LP. It was just a hangout. We did it like in kind of a rehearsal space, and it was just us like you know drinking, and we had like friends kind of hanging out, and it was very low key and very mellow. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's really appropriate for the sound of the band. Is that's what that's what gives it this relaxed feeling that you got. And I want to keep that feeling where it's not it's not like the end of the world. We're just kind of trying things out, and it's very open, very free. And if like a spark happens, it just kind of happens. And I think that's a good environment to set up for it to happen. Um, so that was the idea. Which is let's go to Spain and, and do a record <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. Are you are you ever worried um, about inspiration ever? dying out or not really I feel pretty I feel like I've been writing so long that I've, I've never really had like a writer's block or anything I mean knock on wood of course yeah. but um, I feel confident that I kind of like like enough things that are that have nothing to do with the band there's like so many influences I have that they're probably that are unexpected maybe like that don't really like I like a lot of music that sounds nothing like the band and I like uh, you know all these kind of different things so I, I feel uh, good about being able to find inspiration you know, it feels like it's kind of got me this far, and it's one thing I always did, I had that natural curiosity, you know. Um, so you started making music in, like, I guess, mm. much younger, but then university was when Cigarettes After Sex, the project came out? That's when it kind of came out. It um, came out about 2008. Um, I'd been making music since I was, like, probably, like, eight years old, though. And I had all kinds of bands and pretty much, like, any style you can name. But uh, Circus After Sex was the first thing I did where I thought I have this like unique group of like eight songs and they feel very unified. They feel, uh, feels like I had made some kind of breakthrough writing wise. And then I, I did that in 2008. The thing was that I, we did that then, but like those songs don't exist anymore. They've all been deleted because it was kind of this constant process where I would make something and then like finish it and be unhappy with it and then tear it down, start over again and just keep starting over until I got something I finally liked. So 
the first four years of Cigarettes was just me making a lot of records that were abandoned and were released and I just took down and stuff because I thought this isn't good enough or it's, I don't like it anymore. But finally when we did VP in 2012, it was the first time I thought I don't want to tear this record down. I actually like it and I think it's good <laughs> for once. Um, which was like a pretty big feeling. And then, what's up? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, did you study music in yeah, university? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I studied uh, like music theory and composition. Mm -hmm. And I thought I would be like a film composer if I didn't make it, um, you know, writing pop songs, mm -hmm. uh, which I still have aspirations to do because I love so many film composers. They're some of the biggest influences on cigarettes are, are those composers. But that was like kind of my maybe backup plan was maybe I'll just go and try and be a film composer. They seem like they can make some money. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, um, so we're a campus radio and um, a lot of a lot of our listeners are university students. Mm -hmm. Did you ever regret going to university or because like now you've created this own thing, your own thing. How was mm -hmm. how did university influence your music? I'll have to say I was a horrible student <laughs> at university. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Meaning that I would uh, just like drop classes left and right and I would just like hated waking up early and I would just skip class all the time so I was a terrible horrible student I can never say I regretted it though because what university did for me was it um, I found like a network of friends that all became involved in cigarettes after sex and professors even that I knew that that's how we got access to um, to do that stairway recording was because I knew the professors really well so it was kind of like it was it's I think university is good because it's like a hangout you just you kind of meet people there and the classes are, that doesn't matter, you know, you just gotta meet people and it's, it's great for connections and I, so I kind of recommend school for that reason almost, you just, you find your people there. And I found a lot of good people that made huge contributions to cigarettes through the university. And friends that I still know, that are they're still really good friends, so it's, I could never regret it. No. Well, I think that's a perfect way to end up an interview. Sure. Thank you again, Greg, from Cigarettes After Sex for joining us today. Definitely, yeah, thank you for having me.